tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And we're getting a picture on the TV. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out uh, a fair amount of detail. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Sunday, July 20th, 1969. Around the world, nearly one billion people watched this moment on television as the first man from Earth prepared to set foot on the moon. At the foot of the ladder, the lamp footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's Because hopefully this video won't come out until after my death. So I have nothing to gain, nothing to profit by telling you what I'm going to tell you. This is, this is the story that my dad told me on his deathbed. Project Slam Dunk was the name of, of this. Um, President Johnson in 1968, okay, um, in Cannon Air Force Base in 1968, he said by that time, by the time he got there, that there was already two large hangars that were connected. There was hundreds of dump trucks that came in and dumped sand and uh, uh, stone and uh, cement powder was powdered over the top of all that to make it look like a lunar landscape. There was hundreds of dump trucks that came in and dumped sand and uh, uh, stone and uh, cement powder was powdered over the top of all that to make it look like a lunar landscape. Cement powder was powdered over the top of all that to make it look like a lunar landscape.
welcome. Thank you, Bob. Those films bring back some great memories. And Neil, that was some speech you made when you first stepped on the moon. When did you prepare that? Actually, I didn't think about that until after we landed on the moon's surface. Really? You thought that up all by yourself, huh? Well, it was a little late to call a writer's meeting when you're coming down that ladder. <laughs> Maybe that's why I never went there. Maybe that's why I never went there. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you know, if that was me up there, I probably would have said, the eagle has landed and so has the chicken. <laughs> but Bob, that trip was a perfect example of teamwork. Thousands of people working on an unprecedented project like that and nothing serious went wrong. You know, I'm not sure about that. I heard a nasty rumor that you left home without your American Express card. <laughs> Neil, before becoming an astronaut, you were a test pilot at NASA's Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California, right? That's right, Bob. And according to the records, you flew over 200 different models of aircraft, including jets, rockets, helicopters, and gliders. Yeah. Boy, you're not afraid to face danger, are you? I'm here. <laughs> You gotta laugh, but I'm glad. <laughs> Tell me, when did you first learn to fly? When I was 15, Bob. Oh, you're kidding. 15? When I was 15, the closest I came to flying was having a propeller on my beanie. <laughs> Neil, a lot of people might not know this, but I should be calling you professor. Well, I used to teach and do research at the University of Cincinnati. Would you like to give me a grade on my monologue? I don't think so, Bob. I taught aerospace engineering, and I'm used to grading things that get off the ground. <laughs> is, it, is it unpatriotic to kick an astronaut in the shins? <laughs> Bob, that didn't come out the way I meant it. It was a brilliant monologue. I'd give it an A+. Oh, nice cop-out. A short time after Neil came back from the moon, he appeared with me on some of the shows we were doing in Vietnam. I'd like to show you some of those clips right now. I've had the privilege of meeting some outstanding men in our time, but the very quiet and soft-spoken young man you're about to meet now is a part of a team that provided this world with a thrill they will not soon forget. Ladies and gentlemen, the first man to set foot on the moon, Neil Armstrong, right here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I've been around the world a few times, and I've had a lot of nice, warm receptions, but I've never had a better one than that. Thank you. It was like this every place we played. They just idolized this man. And at every base, we had a question and answer period. I'd like to find out, what did it feel like to be the first man to step on the moon? Well, we were very worried about uh, our first steps on the moon because uh, some people had, some experts had predicted just shortly before f launch that we would sink into the surface uh, and wouldn't be able to uh, hold our weight at all and we'd just disappear into the dust. And of course, we were really uh, pleased to find out that they were, they were wrong. <laughs> Is that two girls or one girl with two heads? <laughs> what, what is it, darling? We'd like to know when you're going to take the first woman to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. When do you want to go? <laughs> we welcome you with open arms. <laughs> we really, I really think that we'll have some women in space one of these days. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure they're going when they find out they can go up there and be weightless. <laughs> I, I 
Delta. What's your question, son? Did you get extra pay for going to the moon? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. Uh, but uh, they, uh, they deducted 50% uh, for uh, government quarters available. <laughs> deducted for uh, government meals available and uh, by the time I got done for the whole trip uh, to the moon back quarantine and uh, eight days down to Cape Kennedy before the flight I got forty three dollars <laughs> Neil, they got a kick seeing you there, and they felt that way about you all over the world. They tell me you were decorated by 17 countries. Well, those were really meant for all of us, Bob, but you've been decorated by quite a few countries yourself. That's true, true, and some of those tomato stains just don't come out. <laughs> uh, do you have any advice for the youngsters out there who might want to take over your job someday? Yes, just study hard and be the best at whatever you want to do. The program will find you. And do you have any advice for youngsters who may want to take over your job someday? Yes, become astronauts. <laughs> Bob, uh, NASA's first 25 years were spectacular. And if they can continue to get young people with strengths in science and mathematics, I'm certain the next 25 can be even better. And the next 25 can be even better. And the next 25 can be even better. And the next 25 can be even better. Well, you certainly gave him a great start. Thank you, Neil Armstrong.